When planes have to land on water in an emergency, it's an extremely rare and dangerous situation. It takes a skilled pilot and just the right conditions. But what's worse is when the aircraft just falls apart after ditching. It was August 21, 1963, when the then-Soviet airline Aeroflot was about to perform its regular flight from Tallinn, Estonia to Moscow. There were 45 passengers and 7 crew members on board the aircraft. Their pilot was 27-year-old Captain Viktor Mostovoy. His co-pilot was Vasily Chechenev. At 8.55 a.m., the plane took off from Tallinn's Ulamisti airport and headed for Moscow's Nukova. But very soon, it became apparent that the plane, along with all those who were on board, was experiencing serious problems. The aircraft's nose gear wouldn't retract. Besides that, during the takeoff, one ball screw got lost and was later found on the runway. The cockpit crew faced a dilemma. They needed to get the plane down. But by that time, it was already impossible to return to Tallinn due to a thick fog that had covered the airport. That's why ground control decided to divert the flight to Leningrad, present-day St. Petersburg. There, the pilots could perform an emergency belly landing on a dirt runway at Polkovo Airport. The pilots confirmed that they understood the task at hand and led the plane toward their destination at a low altitude. At the airport, all emergency services were at the ready. Fire trucks and ambulances were waiting next to the dirt runway, where the plane was supposed to land. Everything seemed to be going more or less smoothly, considering the critical situation. However, first, the plane had to reduce the amount of fuel it was carrying. That would make the aircraft lighter and minimize the risk of a fire during the crash landing. So, at approximately 11 a.m., the plane began to circle the city at an altitude of 1,480 feet, with each circle taking about 15 minutes to complete. Following the captain's order, the cabin crew tried to distract the passengers with funny stories and air tales to prevent a panic from ensuing. Meanwhile, the crew repeatedly tried to push the nose gear with a pole they'd found in a closet to make it lock in the fully extended position. Unfortunately, all of their attempts failed. But that wasn't the worst news that fate had in store for the unfortunate plane. At about 12 p.m., the pilots were performing the eighth and last circuit over the city and were already less than 12 miles away from the airport. The fuel gauge clearly showed that there was still almost a ton of fuel on board the plane, which was more than enough to reach the airport. That's why you can imagine how shocked the pilots were when engine one suddenly went out because of fuel starvation. Apparently, the pilots had burned more fuel than they'd initially planned. Something had to be done, and immediately. That's when air traffic control made a grave mistake. They allowed the plane to take a shortcut and fly to the airport through the city center. But as soon as the pilots had changed course and turned toward downtown, dead silence fell over the flight deck. The second and last engine shut down as well. The 40-ton plane was careening toward the famous St. Isaac's Cathedral in the city center at a blistering speed. At the same time, air traffic controllers couldn't see the plane on their radars anymore because its altitude was too low to be registered. That's why at the airport, they were sure that the plane had already crashed. But as it turned out, the pilots were still hanging on. The only chance of survival was to ditch in the Neva River. The captain passed control over to the co-pilot because Chechenev had served in naval aviation and had some experience in landing on water. The plane glided over the Bolshoi-Katinsky Bridge steel structures with a mere 100 feet of clearance and barely missed the Alexander Nevsky Bridge, which was under construction at that time. Luckily, Chechenev managed to ditch the plane perfectly. It neither dived into the water nor hit the fuselage tail section against the river's surface. The crash landing took place just 14 seconds after the second engine had flamed out. That's how incredibly quickly the cockpit had reacted. As soon as the hanging nose landing gear touched the surface of the water, it got torn away. 
then the plane started to drift slowly toward the supports of the Finland Railway Bridge. Miraculously, all of the passengers and crew members not only stayed alive, but they were completely unharmed. I'm sure everyone on board let out a sigh of relief at that moment. But little did they know that the danger was far from over. The plane's ripped fuselage started to gulp down the river water. The Neva is 1,300 feet wide and more than 40 feet deep in that particular spot. So there was a very real risk that the aircraft would sink, bringing all the people down with it. Luckily, there was a steam tugboat moving on the river not far from the place of the emergency landing. Only thanks to the boat captain's fast reaction, the plane didn't flood too fast for the people trapped inside to leave it. The tugboat darted to the plane, propped up one of its wings, and started to push the aircraft toward the riverbank. The tugboat captain had to break the plane's windshield to fasten the tow rope to the cockpit's control wheel. While the boat was towing the aircraft, all the people remained on board and then evacuated through an access hatch in the roof. When the passengers and crew stepped on land, all of them were safe, without a scratch or bruise in sight. But how on earth did the pilots manage to land the plane safely on the water, with no losses or even injuries? Chechenev's water landing experience played a huge role in the lucky outcome. Besides, it took the cockpit crew mere seconds to come to the only correct decision to ditch the plane in the river. Otherwise, the aircraft would have fallen on the city, 